A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. GMFM, WBT, NV. My name is Flambe Mess and this has been the um, most unenthusiastic <laughs> intro since the start of this channel. Nearly as enthusiastic as my first few introductions. So, last time around, we have talked about um, this Cambridge interview question. And it yielded something very nice. Namely, what we did is we had an expression with a radical, so a third inside of a third. And I told you that we, as mathematicians, call this denesting the radical, where we turn radicals inside of radicals into just the difference of radicals, basically. Okay, this is what we want to get out on the other side. We would like to simplify this ex expression or whole class of expressions like this into something which is the difference or the addition summation of just a third plus or minus a third. You don't see another third here? Well, fear not, because one is nothing other than square root of one. And we want to deal with this whole class basically of denesting radicals today. And at first let me give you some motivation. Okay? Um, and then I'm going to tell you which class of radicals we are going to denest in the process and what we can take as a few assumptions to make our life a bit easier as mathematicians in certain field extensions. So first things first, I want you guys to notice that we can track the 2 into the square root of 2. Okay, then we are going to get the square root of 8 out. Okay, and then we have an expression of the form square root of something rational. And well, plus or minus the square root of, well, 8 is also something rational. It could also be 1 half. Okay, so we are going to deal with a class of radicals of the form uh, square root of x plus or minus the square root of y, where x and y are both rational numbers. Now here comes our next assumption that we are going to take into consideration, namely from this example we were able to see that we are going to get the square root of something rational plus or minus the square root of something rational out on the other side. And you could just say, okay, this right here is just equal to some weird ex expression x. Okay, and then you could square both sides and then get rid of this square root right here once again by squaring again, giving you a um, quartic polynomial, which is really hard to solve. But we are going to assume, so for the sake of simplification, that we're actually going to get something out on the other side of the form where square root of a plus or minus the square root of b, where a and b are also rational numbers. And now here come a few conditions in um, that, that we are going to expand on later. We are going to put a few more conditions in later to make our life um, also a bit easier, okay? Just to see which class of radicals inside of radicals we can actually denest. So the first assumption that we are going to take is that our x where a and b are all element of the rational numbers. And not only the rational numbers, but they must be element of the positive rational numbers. Okay, this is something that we need to have. Now, denesting the radical means that we have radicals inside of radicals. Now, what were to happen if, for example, our y is a perfect square, then that would be kind of awkward because um, we are going to get a perfect square and the square root of that is just some whole number or rational number. Rational plus or minus rational is rational and then we are just going to get the square root of something rational out, which is already denested in and of itself. So to have a little bit of fun here as mathematicians, we are going to assume that y is not a perfect square. Or in other words, we are going to say that y is irrational. So those are the first few conditions and now we can go ahead and get started with the actual denesting by taking a look at those few assumptions. So at first what I would like to do is I would like to take the square root on both sides. Okay, This is the first step and we are going to play a little bit of field extension theory here. Okay, This basically goes into the field of Galois theory if you were a little bit more involved with abstract algebra. So it's a very very cool topic that, that Ramanujan dealt a, a lot with. So by squaring both sides we are going to get, well, square root squared is just going to be the argument in itself. So x plus minus square root of y is hence nothing other than this expression squared, just by normal theorem. We are going to get the square root of a squared, which is just a. Then we are also going to get plus the square root of b squared, which is going to give us b. And then we are going to get plus or minus in the middle, really depends. Um, two times the square root of a times the square root of b, which together is just the square root of a times b. Now, we are going to um, take our mind over the complex numbers a tiny little bit because it's really similar when it comes to field e extensions. Okay, so 
On the complex numbers, what you do is you take the real numbers and basically you adjungate, um, if this is also the English word, in, in German you say adjungieren, an, an element adjungieren to a certain kind of field to basically get more elements in there. So you can also take the positive integers and put i into the set 2, giving you the Gaussian integers, for example. You can do so too for the complex numbers. They are basically just extended real numbers, just a field extension, you could say. And then what you can do is you can say, okay, the part without the i is going to be our real part. And if we have two complex numbers given, they are equal if the real part is equal and the thing next to the i is equal on both sides, okay? So the imaginary part. We have the same situation here, basically. So we have a part which is completely rational because x, a and b are by assumption rational numbers. So this right here is basically the rational part. And other than that, we have adjungated roots. Namely, this right here is just going to be the field e extension of the rational numbers. We are going to have an irrational part. Squared of y, but by assumption, is going to be an irrational number. A and B are both rational but are not going to turn into a perfect square probably. Okay, um, this is just the case that, that we have here. And basically what we're going to do is we're also going to compare our square root parts. But the most important part here is namely that we are going to say okay x is equal to a plus b as being our rational part. So we have another thing that we can actually take out of this whole um, uh, calculations here, namely that x must be equal to a plus b. Okay, this is just the rational part. This is what you do um, when dealing with field e extensions, putting extra elements into there to get a few more um, properties into your field, which is a pretty cool thing and extremely complicated, but abstract algebra is really beautiful. Now we are going to go ahead and um, this right here is the first thing that we would like um, to remember for later. But now what I would like to do is I would like to play around with the difference of two squares a tiny little bit. And for this what we are going to do is we are going to multiply both sides by basically basically the conjugate. Okay, conjugate means we are just going to turn around the signs okay, on both sides and we are going to multiply with this expression. Meaning what we are going to do is on the next step we are going to multiply our original expression so square root of x plus minus square root of y with the square root of x minus plus the square root of y and on the other side what we are going to get this is equal to the square root of a plus or minus the square root of b multiplied with its conjugate basically. So the square root of a minus plus the square root of b. Now the cool thing is difference of two squares makes our life really easy because what we are going to do is we are going to eliminate the middle part that we have in the binomial theorem in the normal case and what we are going to end up with is just okay let us go through the cases here a tiny bit on the right hand side. We are going to get square root of a squared which is going to be just a and then we are going to get plus times minus which is minus or minus times plus hey also minus this is good always a negative sign with square root of b squared which is just going to yield b overall okay meaning what we are going to get out on the left hand side is just a minus b in general. Now we are going to go ahead and take a look at the left hand side. Now the left hand side is going to yield that we can use the multiplicative property of the arguments of the third. Okay, We are going to multiply those together getting rid of the third in the process. And by multiplying those together we are going to get the same situation as here. So on the one hand we are going to get plus and minus are going to um, cancel each other out ba basically to just be minus all the time on the difference of the squares and giving us x squared in the process and then minus square root of y but the whole thing squared is just y. Leaving us on the other hand with this being equal to the square root of um, x minus so x squared minus y. Okay, and this is good, right? Now we actually already came pretty far because now we can find out how we can, for certain conditions, express our a and b separately as solutions to denesting the radical. For this, we are going to use our first equation here that we derived. So what we are going to do is we are going to solve for a on the one hand and then for b on the other hand. So on the one hand we have a is nothing other than, okay, we are going to get x minus b. And we also have that b is nothing other than x minus a. Now we can start plugging those two into our original e equation one after another to get two more equations which are going to give us final expressions for a and b. So let us plug in um, b at first to get an expression for a because this right here is going to be the first part of denesting our radical. 
by plugging b in, we are going to get, okay, b is x minus a, giving us a minus x plus a, okay, which is going to yield overall um, 2a minus x, being equal to the square root of x squared minus y. Now we can just add x on both sides and then divide both sides by 2, leaving us with an expression of a being equal to um, 1 half times and all the rest, x plus the square root of x squared minus y. Okay, this right here has been the first solution for our a, this is good. And now for the second solution, namely we are going to plug the value for a into here where a was nothing other than x minus b. Giving us in the process, um, x minus b minus b is going to give us negative 2b being equal to the square root of x squared minus y. And now what we are going to do is just simply solve. We are going to add 2b on both sides, subtract the third on both sides, and then we are going to multiply both sides by 1 half because it's not equal to 0, giving us in the process b being equal to 1 half times x minus the square root of x squared minus y. And yeah, this is basically it. This right here is the solution to denesting the radical under the given conditions that we had at the start. And now we are going to expand on our conditions a tiny little bit more because we need that our a right here is a rational number in the process. Why do we need a for example and b to be a rational number? Well the thing is, if those weren't rational numbers, for example um, if our square root right here would be preserved, then we wouldn't really denest our radical because then we would have the square root of 1 half times 1 plus the square root of 3. Okay, this would just be a radical inside a radical yet again. And this has nothing to do with denesting the radical. So to get rid of this mess, what we are just going to assume is that x squared minus y must also be a perfect square. Okay, meaning x squared minus y must be a perfect square. Okay. This is another condition that we need to have. And also, we are only dealing in the real numbers here. Okay, This is just something that we want right now. We are not going to deal with uh, complex numbers here, but you can do a nice uh, field extension on complex numbers too here. So we are also going to assume that x squared minus y is going to be a positive, meaning overall x squared minus y is greater than zero, meaning also that x squared must be greater than y. And this is basically it. Those are the conditions that we need to fulfill. I hope I didn't forget any um, in, in the heat of the moment. And now you can start um, trying out to uh, denest certain radicals under the certain conditions given. So, so you can basically just construct yourself exercises. There are a lot of cases where denesting the radical really doesn't work out under the given conditions just because, um, well, <laughs> just doesn't work out because one of those conditions right here isn't fulfilled. And if you were wondering how you can denest, for example, expressions of the form um, square root of x plus or minus z times the square root of y, well, like mentioned before, you can just drag the z into the square root, meaning you are going to set your y that we have right here equal to just um, z squared times y. And then you are basically done. This is what you can also do. And this basically concludes today's video and maybe a few more videos um, to come on denesting the radical. And if you did enjoy what you saw today, then you might as well enjoy the content of today's sponsor Brilliant, who were kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. If you're not yet familiar with Brilliant, let me give you a tiny little introduction. So Brilliant is basically the best source for online education and content that you can find out there. And I mean it when I say it because you can find a lot of courses over there ranging from mathematics over to physics all the way over to chemistry and Python programming. No matter what you want to go at in the STEM branch, really doesn't matter which part of STEM um, education you want to go for, they have you covered and they are going to expand your repertoire of knowledge immensely if you really go through their courses one after another. And it's not just their questions or their exercises in general which make the experience so great for me. Um, it's just the overall thing. It, it starts with their really easy to understand explanations which are very playful with all the graphics and the interactive um, content that, that you can find over there. But, but just in, in general everything. 
the way they try to get the point across is just phenomenal in my opinion and I have never seen this before. I could just dream of creating such very nicely explained educational content on my own and this really speaks for itself because I personally think of myself as being a kind of good explainer. Not a perfect one but I bring a point across uh, pretty nicely even to my students but Brilliant is on a whole new level if you ask me and if you really spend the time over on their website and try to think every everything through, you are going to be really knowledgeable over time, very very knowledgeable in all topics, mathematics for example, be it linear algebra, regular algebra, competitive mathematics, they are just going to make you really smart and I mean it, it's a really really good course concept and I love it. And if you feel like trying it out for yourself, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. You can get free access to a big portion of print already if you try it out, but more importantly, if you really think the content is really really to your liking then make sure to get yourself an annual premium subscription and you're going to get it 20% off at least the first 200 people to use the link okay I don't know if, if already 200 people use the link but maybe you're lucky and you can still get a slot in there so definitely try it out and support the channel this way I thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video then please like subscribe and recommend channel if like if you want to support the channel a bit more buy this new merchandise it's over in my shop okay math puns are the first sign of um yeah, no, no, are the main cause of happiness. <laughs> Here's the other one with the um, first sign of uh, madness. <laughs> okay, Th this one's also really good with the sign function. But, but yeah, other than that, on STEM merch, we now have the engineering watch. So also check it out here. Yeah, so, so, so much merch. I'm just a wandering this Werbeplakat, okay? <laughs> so yeah, you can support the channel in, in various ways. And I'll the next video. I wish you guys a slender day. Please stay safe. Ciao.